Yeah. Well, uh, first off, uh, I just want to say I appreciate you guys all being here uh, to celebrate this uh, important milestone for analog science fiction in fact, uh, a magazine that goes near and dear to all our hearts, uh, but especially its influence on science fiction uh, in general. Um, so my name is Jason Ellis, and I'd like to welcome you all to the fourth annual City Tech Science Fiction Symposium, focusing on an astounding 90 years of analog science fiction in fact. We inaugurated this annual symposium on SF and interdisciplinarity four years ago, after City Tech received an anonymous donation of SF magazines and books that stretch across 600 feet of shelf space. Since then, additional donations have expanded the holdings, and the collection is now open for researchers to utilize with their scholarship and students to visit in conjunction with their classes. Looking ahead, we're working to make the collection available more widely in research and teaching. A part of that ongoing initiative is this annual symposium to present research, share teaching strategies, and build bridges between the university and other important areas of our culture. One such bridge began construction before last year's symposium when the Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences, Justin Vasquez Portis, stopped to speak with Analog SS Managing Editor Emily Hockaday at the Brooklyn Book Festival. The Dean suggested that I follow up this conversation with an email template, which led to conversations about shared interest in the power of SF as an interdisciplinary genre with the potential for igniting curiosity, fueling imagination, and illuminating spaces for greater inclusivity of SF writers and readers. With generous donations of copies of Analog SF, attendees at last year's symposium walked away with new SF stories to read and share. Then with the 90th anniversary of Analog SF approaching, Emily and I, Emily and I hatched a plan to combine our forces for a symposium celebrating this important milestone for one of the cornerstones of City Tech's science fiction collection. City Tech's run of Astounding Analog begins with the January 1934 issue and runs through the December 2006 issue. Um, our idea was to bring editors, writers, scholars, students, and fans together to hear from those who make Analog SF possible and share cutting edge research related to the magazine. While we celebrate the 90th anniversary of Analog SF, we hope that you enjoy today's sessions and make new connections with the people here and the ideas circulating. Before we begin, I would like to express our gratitude to folks who have played an important role in making today's symposium possible. Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences, Justin Vasquez Ports, uh, for immediately grokking our college's need for a science fiction collection and providing his unparalleled support for it and the symposium. Uh, Trevor Kashi, uh, Managing Editor Emily Hockaday, and Editorial Assistant uh, Ray Burdam for your collaboration on the symposium and manual labor installing this year's library exhibits uh, on SF. Uh, publisher Peter Cantor and Penny Publications for supporting the symposium in more than one way. Special Assistant to the President Stephen Soifer for getting the word out. Faculty Commons Director Julia Jordan and her amazing student intern team for the essential logistical support. Faculty Commons Graphic Designer Intern Julie Bradford for another amazing poster. She also designed our Frankenstein poster for last year's symposium. Uh, image Technology and Reproduction Supervisor Luba Stepanek and Ms. Clara for printing symposium posters and programs. Uh, Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences Secretary Ivan Williams for orchestrating reservations and catering. Director of Theater Operations Adam Walker and Performing Arts Center Manager uh, Catalin Zadaru for reserving our space and providing logistical support, which for those of you unfamiliar with City of Tech's campus, this is our new um, you know, multi-million dollar building that's beautiful on the inside and it's, it's an amazing space for us to hold uh, the symposium. Uh, and those folks help uh, us make that space available for the event. Uh, buildings and Grounds Superintendent James Vasquez for arranging the room to meet our needs. Assistant Vice President and Chief Information Officer Rita Uden and Computer Information Services for providing our guest Wi-Fi access if you need that. Um, and then for the collection, we thank our gracious anonymous donor whose gift inaugurated our collection and a new era of SF at City Tech. Our former colleague, Alan Lovegreen, who before returning to California helped make our acquisition of the collection possible. And we thank the City Tech Administration and the City Tech Foundation for their vision and support to bring the collection here. 
Um, we thank Chief Librarian and Library Department Chair uh, Morris Snail, Librarians Keith Mikowski and Morris Hoonian for integrating the collection uh, into their holdings and working to make it accessible to students and faculty. We thank the Library's Collection Management Librarian, Wynette Clyde, uh, who hit the ground running with support for the collection and providing access to it when she started very recently. Uh, and I'd like to personally thank my colleagues who helped with this year's symposium, Lee Gold, Lucas Kwong, LaBelle Porter, Sean Scanlon, and my former student, Jessica Roman. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to thank you all, again, for joining us today to celebrate the 90th anniversary of Analog Science Fiction. In fact, one of the few long-standing leaders in SF. Uh, now I'd like to introduce to the Dean of School of Arts and Sciences, Justin Vasquez, uh, who would like to say a few words. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our fourth annual Science Fiction Symposium in celebration of 90 years of analog science fiction uh, and fact. So uh, I almost said science fiction and science fact because as the name indicates, um, it draws upon analogies between the uh, act of uh, creativity and writing science fiction and a Carl Sagan-esque uh, childhood <coughs> wonder of expanding the boundaries of human knowledge. Uh, so Isaac Asimov uh, once uh, proposed a simple test uh, to identify potentially creative children who might make good scientists of the future simply an interest in science fiction. Uh, one fan once quipped, the real golden age is 12. Uh, in fact, uh, John Campbell and his top writers uh, saw science fiction not so much as a form of escapism, but rather as an educational tool with the potential to change lives. And so the mythical psychohistorians that Campbell and Asimov uh, created had incredible predictive powers of applying analytical and statistical methods to galactic populations in the trillions. Uh, but now, science has uh, plunged ahead with big data. Uh, and so I wonder what Asimov would have made of uh, applying big data methods or supermassive form of big data to galactic populations. So with science plowing ahead and then science fiction going even further, uh, it seems to me that progress on both sides uh, relies on this continual imbalance, each one in friendly competition with each, each other, struggling to keep ahead of the other. I mention this because while we're in a still fairly shiny new building, this is now the second year that we're using it, uh, the important thing is what we don't see right now, which are the students on the floors above us and in fact throughout our campus that are applying methods of uh, science uh, in their degree programs, in their research projects, uh, things that were once considered science fiction, uh, including robotics, cybernetics, 3D printing, uh, data science, all the way to accelerator physics, the largest machine that mankind has ever created, the Large Hadron Collider, to DNA barcoding, to synthetic patients that can respond and talk uh, for our nursing uh, students to practice on. When I was in my first days of being Dean, uh, Alan Lovegreen had uh, come to me, uh, mentioning that there's an anonymous donor uh, willing to give us his entire science fiction magazine collection, and book collection. And to be honest, I thought I was dreaming, and uh, yeah, I, he didn't see it, but behind me, I was kind of pinching my, my hands to make sure that I, I wasn't dreaming. And for me personally, it seemed like a pretty good opportunity but it also seemed like a pretty good opportunity for uh, New York City's College of Technology, uh, a match made in heaven, I would say. So with that, I would, um, I would like to uh, thank some people uh, that made this event possible. I'm kind of grateful that uh, Jason did a, a pretty complete job of thanking many people um, with the logistical help uh, in the background. Uh, so I would say first and foremost, I would like to thank Jason Ellis for all of his hard work uh, with the science fiction uh, collection, as well as uh, organizing the symposium. And I would also like to thank his colleagues uh, who have uh, helped organize this as well. Uh, Lee Gold, Lucas Kwong, Lavelle Porta, Sean Scanlon, and uh, Jessica Roman. Uh, I would also like to thank the chief librarian, uh, Mara Smale, as well as her staff. Uh, and uh, the um, analog editor, uh, Trevor 
uh, top three and the managing editor, Emily uh, Hockaday. Uh, and uh, kind of echoing Jason, I would like to uh, thank all of you and our fabulous lineup of guest speakers. So uh, here's to what I hope will be a partnership uh, with Analog that will see through our 100-year celebration and beyond. Thank you.